What's up everyone? Welcome back to Wait Your Turn. It's your boy Jordan and today we are reviewing the legendary, the amazing, the very black box itself, Kingdom Death Monster. Don't go anywhere. We're going to get down to the nitty grit. Is this game for you? It was for me and it's it's pretty good, but before I, <laughs> before I spill the beans at the very beginning of the video, let's get into it. 3, 2, 1, let's go. So you might be wondering, who's this kid? What does he know about Kingdom Death? It's been out for like three, four years right now. So my credentials, if I can just tell you real quick, is that I have played... 3.5 campaigns of Kingdom Death Monster. Yes, a very lofty amount of gameplay. About 50 hours recorded. You can check that out on the channel, as well as about 20 more off screen. And that's not even including the hours that I've spent just thinking about this game. So, yes, we finally, <laughs> after hours and hours and hours of playing Kingdom Death Monster, I'm finally at that position where I feel like I can give you a very educated estimation of the worth of Kingdom Death Monster. It took a long time, a decent amount, but by no means like a full mastery of the game. I played a whole nearly a whole campaign excluding the final final boss and stopping somewhere around the penultimate final boss whatever that means you'll, you'll understand if you get this game i'm just gonna let you know now this is my favorite board game of 2019 i said it it's there set in stone and i hope it won't be my favorite board game of 2020, if you know what I'm saying. I'm hoping to be surprised this coming year. I mean, 2020 has already surprised a lot of us so far. But that's it. Kingdom Death Monster, favorite game, hands down, 2019. Better than Dungeons & Dragons. <laughs> Which is, uh, I don't know, that's... <laughs> That's not really a high bar to beat. And let's get into it. We're going to be breaking down this review into the concerns, the six gates of why you would not enjoy Kingdom Death Monster, as well as just discussing the general gameplay loop of this game and its merits, its mechanics, its simplicity, the beauty. And this is generally just going to be a very positive review. But at the same time, I want to help you, the viewer, understand whether this game is worth $325, $400, or maybe a cool $200 if you get it without the miniatures on eBay from a pirate. We are going to get into Kingdom Death Monster. Stick around with me, and let's get into it. So let's begin with the first gate that would prevent even the most avid board gamer from getting into Kingdom Death Monster, and that is the price. At $400, this behemoth of a box demands a lot financially from the very beginning, not to mention the gates that you'll have to go through to even begin playing this game. In order to even understand why it's been priced at that insanely high value, we first need to understand that this game comes into two comes in two relatively equal halves. The first half is about a $150 card-based core game that is within this box, and the second is a maybe $250 second half larger half of unassembled miniature hobby plastic paradise. For you uninitiated, this will be something of a learning curve. In order to fully enjoy this game, I'd recommend that you are willing to try out both halves, the assembling and the actual game, which regardless whether you substitute your own miniatures or not, will be very enjoyable. However, if you're not, um, if you're a first-time miniature assembler like myself, or you don't have any sweatshop experience working in a Chinese factory, then this will be something of a shock. But yet, at the end, after the heartache and the eye strain and the hand tremors and maybe a slight case of carpal tunnels, you will come to enjoy this game. If you approach it with an open mind, I can, uh, I can attest to that. Even though there is a significant sink of time in each miniature you assemble for this game, it will be a moment of precious zen until you, you are dying to get the game to continue and you're just you're backlogged by 20 or 30 miniatures that um, would just go perfect with that scenario. If you're not able to embrace both sides, this game can feel somewhat incomplete, boring, or just demanding. However, at the end of the day, this, com this part of the game, this, this game <laughs> that requires you to play before you can even play the game, it takes about 30 minutes to an hour on average to assemble a single plastic miniature. And then we have the Phoenix, which took about maybe two hours. So when I say on average, it can vary extremely depending on the difficulty of the build, the monster, the... Uh, and everything else, and we're not even talking about painting. However, these miniatures were a joy to work with, and it is definitely a price point for the game. That is 
the first gate of Kingdom Death Monster. Now, let's move on to the second major gate that would keep you from playing Kingdom Death Monster, and that is the overall theme and the aesthetic of the depiction of the world of Kingdom Death Monster. The two-dimensional art by many means, in many words, is phenomenal. It's otherworldly, it's magnetic in many ways, and yet, at times it can be rather unpleasant, controversial, and definitely not family-friendly. Luckily, in favor of the larger picture, one that doesn't involve uh, exposed nether regions, uh, copious amounts of cleavage, and worse, <laughs> I won't get into that now, most of this can be ignored, especially when most of it is relegated merely to the rulebook. What you have left, on the other hand, is a very good game, a very entertaining one, and in fact, one that is extremely polished, especially when it comes to the rulebook. Despite the acquired taste that is the art within the rulebook, the remaining aesthetic is a surprisingly minimalist approach to design with beautifully simplistic card layouts, legible font, and generally polished procedure. At the same time, however, the rulebook can also be one of the worst experiences of this game through a concept called book scouring, as you have to constantly look through an index of story events and other happenings that may just erupt in a single moment, leading you to erase a previously created character. On the other hand, they have made it as luxury or boutique as possible with bookmarks, several full-color spreads, a hardcover book with glossy pages, and many redundant pages explaining the same procedure in different ways. And yet, despite its clumsy and awkward landscape orientation, this book keeps on surprising me. It's incredibly good! Even though it is incredibly awkward, at the same time, it makes me just want to tear it up and then embrace it at the same time. It's, it's, it's like any great romance. And of course, with every good book, there is plenty and plenty of book keeping. Um, here, for instance, is a very good example of a nice, clean, blank slate with plenty of options to write about. It's only single-sided, and yet you'll be constantly erasing and drawing and writing new arts, new disorders, erasing disorders, erasing fighting arts, drawing in insanity, erasing insanity, entering in survival, erasing survival, updating stats, erasing stats, writing names, adding titles, erasing names, forgetting names, adding hunt experience. There is a lot contained on these small pieces of paper that will torture your mind as your characters go through ups, downs, and eventually death. At the same time, there is the settlement record sheet. Again, a blank slate full of promise and incredibly, incredibly dense in terms of recording calendar events, settlement locations, and then finally, the various strappings of resources as you gradually accumulate various doodads including muculent droppings, leather, phoenix whiskers, small feathers, scrap, bone, and pustules. There's a lot to be contained within this game and definitely several playthroughs are required in order to even begin to scratch the barest of services and that's without cheating, unlike me. And that brings us to category gate number four unavoidable randomness. This game, it all revolves around this pesky, little, and fatal D10. There are ways to mitigate this, for sure, so it's not always, always being a slave to the die, even though nine times out of ten, you probably are in this game, and you just have to roll with the punches as you move through this nightmarish world. I'll have to be honest, the first time I played, I knew that we were gonna die, and we were gonna die rather soon, and I just sat back and I enjoyed the spectacle that unfolded before my eyes. The second time I played, it was a little bit more disheartening. I wanted to see how far I could go, but I kept hitting the same walls, I kept hitting the same blocks, and after having spent so much time assembling and painting and getting ready for an epic campaign, the game usually got the best of me. The third time I played, it was actually frustrating. It was frustrating I couldn't get as far as I wanted to without cheating or doing it legitly. And that brings me to my 
main point. There are a lot of different ways to experience Kingdom Death Monster, and none of them are absolutely wrong. At least, <laughs> at least unless you cheat like myself, but I still enjoyed it even when I did cheat. However, this game introduces or allows you to approach both sudden deaths or to prepare for inevitable deaths in the way that you see as most fit for your settlement. So there are a lot of good ways to enjoy this game regardless of fatal and final outcomes that are controlled by this pesky little d10. So even though rolling a 1 could mean guaranteed death, loss, tragedy, the joy and the fun of rolling a perfect lantern 10 at the right moment is absolutely phenomenal, unforgettable, and <laughs> not life changing, it's not that good, but it's a very good and fun mechanic. The randomness is just part of its charm, the highs and lows and what you experience as you go on the roller coaster of Kingdom Death is just uh, so good, so good. So, I see a couple different ways to approach this game, especially in terms of the unavoidable randomness. In case you like more control in your game, this is a game where you can only control how you respond to sudden deaths, as well as how you prepare for inevitable deaths. That doesn't really sound very great, does it? Even though rolling a 1 could mean a guaranteed death, the absolute joy of rolling a critical lantern 10 in this game is just incomparable. There's just so much satisfaction that comes from the randomness with the highs, with the lows, and the ultimate story that unravels and unfolds before your very eye is something that is worth experiencing at least once. And if it just breaks your heart that one time, I think it will be <laughs> a worthwhile time, regardless of the heartbreak. That's how good I enjoyed getting killed by this game. In that way, it's every shade of a bittersweet gambling addiction. Alright, so you're still here. That's a good sign. We're moving on to concern number five, gate number five. Why wouldn't you enjoy Kingdom Death Monster? And that is regarding the narrative of the game. How good is the narrative? Will it keep you coming back for more? Is it enjoyable? Is it good? And that's the funny thing. Kingdom Death Monster is actually anti-narrative. Its premise is that something has consumed history, leaving only bitter survival. This is no RPG. In fact, the only narrative that you will experience in this game emerges from the short-lived, unfortunate lifespans of your survivors. At its best, it's a very good story generator that will take you on a roller coaster ride of highs and lows of a series of brave hunters in your settlement. At its worst, it's a dice-driven roller coaster with no steering wheel that doesn't care about how you feel about Omar, the shining hero of the antelope because he's already dead. And now we're moving on to our final concern, and that is painting and assembling the actual miniatures. Was it actually worth it? Yes, in fact it was. But as someone who has a lot more time than perhaps your average person, I wouldn't recommend it for just anyone. As I mentioned before, these miniatures took about 30 minutes to an hour, sometimes more than that, just to assemble them, and then many, 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 many more hours ahead. You'll have many full weekends ahead of you if you commit to a full painted set. And I still have the gold smoke knight looking at me over there. Don't worry, I'll get to you. And so, this game, even though this was my first time assembling, first time, I mean, I'd started painting maybe a couple months before I got this game, it's overall very satisfying. The quality and the detail makes it very rewarding to paint, and the miniatures, though confusing at times, uh, make it very fun, especially as you commemorate old survivors, you build survivors with armor and weapons that you've, you're actually using in the game. The armor kits are very clever, and they just bring out a very deep and evocative world in total. So. I'd recommend if you are still on the edge about this, you don't have to use these miniatures. You can buy a miniature-less core game for yourself from someone off some dark alleyway on the internet. But if you really want to find out if this miniature aspect of Kingdom Death Monsters is for you, I recommend you just buy a miniature that requires assembling from Kingdom Death Monsters shop and try it out for yourself. And if you don't hate it, or maybe you like it, or maybe you just don't hate it, then Go ahead and dive in, because this is a miniature hobbyist's dream. 
in the best way possible. Sometimes the worst way, just because of how detailed they are. Alright, so now that you've survived the six gates of Kingdom Death Monster, you can finally enjoy the beautiful and brutal simplicity that is Kingdom Death. And so it's a very simple gameplay loop actually that surrounds three basic phases. And so I'm going to show you the first one right here, which is the hunt phase, which is basically the rising action leading up to a showdown with your chosen or not chosen quarry of choice. In this case, it's going to be a white lion. So as we're going through this phase, you're basically moving up to cards, moving forward down this card or ridden track, revealing cards, rolling dice, and there's very minimal player choice. It's basically to roll or not to roll as you lead up to this showdown. Um, as you're spending time in this very simple kind of roll and go narrative unfolding of events, it's a very flavor rich phase and one that I actually particularly enjoy in the way that it changes your survivors. It tells a very eventful journey as you're searching for food and it has all the things that I enjoy in a very simple D&D &D adventure, even though it does minimalize your choice as a player. So very simple, very elegant, and very good. Even more importantly, as your survivors venture throughout the darkness leading up to the showdown, your time on the hunt track may permanently alter your survivors, giving them permanent stat bonuses, new disorders, new abilities, or various attribute changes that are permanent to their stats. As your survivors overcome the darkness and the various events that are waiting for them within the darkness surrounding your settlement, your survivors will eventually approach and hopefully get the jump on their quarry of choice, which brings us to the second phase, the showdown phase. Basically, why all of you are watching this video and why Kingdom Death Monster has become so iconic and riveting as a production. At the end of the day, Kingdom Death Monster is a boss battler. No, an amazing boss battler with a darker and at times unappetizing theme. Each core you face will have its own very unique hit location deck which will help you discover its grisly and unique anatomy with each hit that you attempt on its body. Here are some examples of the White Lion's Beast Heel, Beast Ear, and the Beast's Brow. Nothing quite compares in this game with rolling a critical lantern 10 and knocking off a lion's shin bone. The system is highly reactive, whether you wound the monster or you fail to wound the monster even, to the point that the combat tells a deeper story of the monster's personality, if you look that deep into it like I do. It has a beautiful crunchiness to it that is so dang fun, rewarding, and satisfying it might as well be a cereal. The other half of the showdown with any monster that you face in Kingdom Death Monster is contained within its very unique AI deck. So each monster has both a unique AI deck or artificial intelligence or basically behavioral deck and a hit location deck, one to determine the body parts of the monster and one to determine how it acts towards threats or you as a survivor. This deck, although simple, is very tight. It determines when you can act and potentially interrupt the actions of the white line, and it will determine how the white line responds to you. This will introduce new traits, behaviors, and attacks ranging from basic to advanced to special to legendary and beyond. No matter the level though, each action can be potentially lethal with poor planning or mitigated with superior anticipation. Every showdown is unique and challenging, especially when you start playing, and after a while and a couple of rune settlements later, you'll learn how to approach certain enemies with certain tactics, and if you're a sadist, you may even enjoy the countless trial and error restarts needed to grasp each fresh nemesis, AI, and hit location deck. There's a ton of variety, a fun learning curve, and death absolutely everywhere. The dice only add to the crazy possibilities of where the fight can go, but ultimately, it's all in the name of survival. And then finally, after having defeated the quarry of your choice, your survivors will collect a number of precious and specifically unique resources to the quarry you have pursued and slain and bring it back to the settlement phase. In my opinion, the reason why you keep playing this game. So. Even though the showdown is interesting, the settlement is why you stay. 
At this point, the familiar hunt track will transform into the settlement board, a railroad track of different upkeep events that are necessary in order to keep your settlement up and running. As you can see, we've gained some endeavors that can be spent to perform various actions such as consulting the augury, sharing experience with fellow survivors, and performing various actions as predicated by our various innovations. Most importantly, however, here, is the introduction of the crafting system, a system of resource exchanging that allows you to transform the raw pulverized bones and raw hides of wild beasts into very usable and needed armor, equipment, and especially weapons. At the very beginning of the game, you won't have access to too many settlement locations in which to refine the various monster hides, skulls, and bones that you've acquired during your hunts, but you will be able to do some basic and very necessary things in converting one hide into, let's say, a rawhide headband, converting a skull into a skull helm for another survivor, or transforming a monster bone into a set of finely crafted bone darts. The possibilities and combinations that you get to discover in this game is truly a reward, in addition to the very clever affinity system that rewards late game item builds using very familiar and very basic equipment from the early game. There's a lot of nuance in this game that I can't even begin to scratch the surface of, but let it be said that the game is clever and elegant and refined in many, many ways while keeping a very nice balance throughout. And so that's about it. And I'm not even getting into the innovations, the endeavors, the disorders, the fighting arts, the secret fighting arts, hunt experience, vermin, cooking, mining, settlement locations, survivor breeding, hunt experience, or any of the other game-changing expansions that are an option when delving into this game. So if any of that appeals to you even in the slightest way, this game has my wholehearted seal of approval, kingdom, just about everything, monster of a project. So that is my wait your turn review on Kingdom Death Monster. If you're interested in this channel and my re other reviews, you can check them out there, 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 everywhere. And please remember to like, subscribe, and follow for more board game related videos. So thank you all to my wonderful patrons. Thanks for watching. And everyone, I hope you have a wonderful day in these crazy times. So take care. Three, two, one, bye.